I, I grew up idolizing uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy. And I like to tell people that I'm uh, I'm like the the love child of Bill Nye the Science Guy and Beyonce and everything that I can do. Uh, but Ooh. Bill Nye, I was way more Bill Nye growing up. And so I, I, I think for me, the, the biggest thing was that science seemed like a way to make magic real. Mm-hmm. And I was given that the space to, to think about things in this way because my, my father was a scientist and an entrepreneur in his own right. Um, and my mother believed in drawing the world like, like, like as if it's art in the way that you want it to be. Mm-hmm. It gave me the opportunity to dream of the world not as it is, but as it could be. I remember kind of my origin story with all of that starts when I was 17. And I was actually in Nigeria for my aunt's wedding. Um, we lost power as expected. It was just a, a common thing. And um, I, I remember what happened kind of set me down this path. Um, we brought in a diesel generator and the kind of just attempt to keep the festivities going. And the fumes were so horrible that I started to complain. And my cousins who were actually engineers, uh, young men in their 20s, what they said was uh, not, okay, yes, here's how we can solve the problem, but rather, um, don't worry, you'll get used to it. And, Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, get used to what exactly? The droning of generators makes for an uncomfortable soundtrack in Nigeria. The country suffers from daily blackouts, so the people have been forced to provide power for themselves. I think it was less of a specific person saying, hey, you can do this, as much as it was me seeing my family really needing something, right? Mm -hmm. Because when I had to sit down and think, well, what, it's not just what's beautiful, but what is already working in the lives of people like my cousin? What's already working in communities uh, in Nigeria? What's so authentically beautiful that it not only amplifies existing behavior, but it creates a bridge between what's working and what's not working. Like I always knew I wanted to create something, but then I, I had that perfect moment uh, to actually push and try things in a slightly more risk-free way. But at the core, the science initially for the what ended up being my first flagship invention uh, when I was 19, the energy generating uh, soccer ball, that was, you know, there were that was basic honors physics. These technologies already exist from the perspective of dynamos, uh, you know, windmills, all these different things are already demonstrating this, but tying it to soccer. But, you know, it was around 2016, and at this time we had raised our kind of first big round when I knew it was weird. I had to go back to what got me into this for the energy gen- generating soccer ball and those play products because it was novel it was cute it was fun but it wasn't actually pressing the the kind of um you know the status quo the system it wasn't disrupting the system it was just like oh that's nice it's very scary to be innovating in a, in a space that very few people understand but it's also something that feels very right uh and i i think that's probably one of my most favorite kind of things to reflect on in the innovation process. It's uh, if you're doing it right, you're growing, you're learning, and you're also innovating on yourself, right? You're inventing yourself for the moment. That the innovation um, and building and inventing for the last 14 years has been an unbelievable blessing. The most important thing for me in my career has been recognizing that the most important step in the innovation process is the articulation of the problem. Mm-hmm. Because the way that you articulate the problem that you're trying to solve then begets the solution. So you, no one can shake your understanding of the fact that there's a problem. You know something's not working. And it, it's now up to you to be almost like um, an adventurer, right? It's more like being mm-hmm. Indiana Jones and trying to find out exactly why this mm-hmm. isn't working and then build to, to solve that. And you can't uh, undervalue the kind of intuition that you have as a founder and an an innovator, especially if you have a willingness to learn and teach yourself. And so just knowing that just because you don't have all the experience doesn't mean that you don't um, have the ability to lead. Wait a minute, why can't we scale it? That's scary, but still the, the juice always felt worth the squeeze. The growth for me always felt really, really worthwhile. Um, You know, I would always ask myself, is this the way I want to spend my life? Um, and because I knew why I was pushing and because I knew I was learning and growing, it, it felt very, very much 
like a no brainer goes, um, in life, we seek to bequeath two things to our children, roots and wings. In my opinion, all this tech, all this infrastructure from 5G to AI to whatever, all it comes down to is a more streamlined, efficient way to deliver roots and wings to everybody. Uh, uh, uh.